In the example at the very end of the last uh, design workshop where I quickly drafted this design for the um, semi-modern gothic arch inspired um, display shelf, I actually didn't construct these arcs to make the gothic arc correctly. I made an error in them. Um, that error probably isn't really detectable just by looking at the way they fit together at this scale. Uh, but it was an error all the, all the same. And um, even if I hadn't made it, I think it was probably pretty hard to see where I was locating these centers for the arcs and how I did it. So what I've done is that I've created a scaled up version, a scaled up rectangle that is essentially this box right here with the feet poking down. It's, it's um, uh, 3x scale, so I've magnified it by three times. And I'm just going to go through the process of constructing these arcs. In order to get a good view of how we construct this Gothic arch inspired uh, framing for the top part of the side of the display bookshelf or the display shelf, um, I've constructed a uh, three times blow up view of the top of the um, the uh, shelf and the uh, design that we've been working up. Um, that's because it's it's kind of hard to see where the centers for the different arcs end up at the, such a small scale and why they end up there. So we're going to go just look at the criteria for what these arcs should do. This point here is the top of the vertical part of the side frame and I want the outer arc that makes up the perimeter of the gothic arch to leave that point with a vertical tangent line and then with a smooth circular trace it should project up to the midpoint of the bounding rectangle and then there's another curve that's a mirror image of that the right left mirror image of that doing the same thing on the outside on, on the, uh, the, the the right side now on the inside the same thing is happening except you know we're so we're still going to start at the top of the vertical part of the frame and leave that with a vertical tangent line but then we're going to trace a curve that remains equidistant from the points on the exterior curve and the only way that's going to work is since the exterior curve was a circle the interior curve needs to be a circle sharing the same center so circular arc sharing the same center but a shorter radius so for both arcs, I'm going to have to find where the center is, and then for the inner arc, I'm going to have to figure out how to adjust the radius. And I'll do the same thing on the right side. So if we think about really what's going on here, well, the first thing I'd need to do is locate the midpoint of the, um, the top of this, this um, rectangle. And I, I've pretty much already done that, but let's just verify that I've got it. It's this point that might show up on your screen as a dark dot. So I'm setting my compass to it, step over here, and it hits the other corner. So this is in fact the midpoint up here. What I'm going to do is lightly draw in the midline for this bounding rectangle that passes through that midpoint. We'll erase it later, but that's just going to help us see where the two halves of the Gothic arch meet. Okay, so now to get an arc that has a vertical tangent line here and traces up to this apex following a circular path, there's a couple of things that I can deduce. Since the tangent line is vertical here, the radius of that arc must be perpendicular to that vertical tangent line. So it must come to the right here at a 90 degree angle. In other words, it's going to fall somewhere. The center is going to fall somewhere on this horizontal radius for this arc that I'm hoping to construct. So I at least know what line the center of my arc is going to be on. And to figure out where on that line, all I really have to do is make the realization that I'm trying to inscribe 
an arc inside of a rectangle where this is where the tangent line um, of the circular arc is common with the edge of the rectangle and here it's passing through the corner of the rectangle at just at some angle. Well that's really just one half of our usual inscribe an arc into a rectangle problem. And in a sense, I really only have to do half as much work to figure out where the center of that arc is. And the simplest way I can do that is just to imagine that there's this diagonal line going through the edge of the rectangle where the point of tangency is with the circle. And then the other end of the diagonal line goes through the corner, corner where the other end of the arc passes. And what I need to do is carefully find the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So I'm going to set my compass between the two endpoints and I'm going to sweep an arc there, sweep an intersecting arc, and I'm going to poke a hole in it. so I can get some level of accuracy here. Okay. Then I'm going to do something quite similar over here. Swing a couple of intersections. Equidistant from the endpoints of my diagonal segment, poke a hole at the intersection. Then I really just need to connect those two dots hmm. try to figure out a way to draw this without obscuring everything but connecting those two intersections first intersection second intersection just so that they pass through that diagonal line and then pass through this horizontal line so this is my perpendicular bisector of this diagonal of the rectangle. And this point, there's a better all. This point right here that's going to serve as the center of my arc which is going to be the left exterior boundary of the Gothic arch. And what I need to do in order to draw it is put the pivot point of my compass on that center, move the marking point of the compass to where I want the arc to begin, in other words, at the top of the uh, uh, left side of the uh, vertical frame, and then just swing the arc until it connects to the midpoint. Now I could go to the trouble of repeating that construction to find my center over here, but I'm just going to use symmetry and mark the center by keeping the compass at the same setting, putting the pivot point of the compass where I want the arc to start, and then mark the intersection of where the center for that arc should be over here on the left of my baseline. Then I should just be able to compass in and draw the arc. So that is the exterior of my Gothic arch. Now the interior really isn't that, once we've got that we've got 90% of the work out of the way. Remember because I want to draw arcs that are just inside of these arcs so that if I take a point uh, and find a tangent line to that point, and then the perpendicular shooting off from that tangent line, the distance from the outside arc to the inside arc that I'm about to draw should always be the same. And I can guarantee that that'll happen knowing that these are both just sec segments of a, you know, of a circle. They're, they're circular arcs. So I just need to draw a concentric circular arc that has a smaller radius so that 
the inside curve stays inside of this exterior boundary. And the smaller radius is just enough to get me from this center to the new starting point on the inside edge of the frame. So I just reset my compass to that position. And all I've got to do is draw the arc until it hits you know, the intersection of that vertical midline. And then I go over to the center on the other side and really keep that same radius. There it goes. And so that becomes a gothic arch with thickness to it, and the thickness is the same all the way across the arch. And what that looks like, when you do that in conjunction with the rest of our design, is something like this. So this is just the 3x blow up of this, and that's how you would perform that construction.